welcome back uh, our guests, of course, Michael Carey in the middle, Mr. Wykes and John Bittney here. Uh, we were just talking about the McAdams campaign and how that was obviously different than the other campaigns that were being run here. And Michael Carey, what do, what do you think of all that? I mean, we had a Democrat that was actually running as a Democrat. And he got 23.46 percent. <laughs> right. Um, Scott McAdams is one of the most remarkable people I've ever met. I think I can say that. I'm not saying his his composure is remarkable. His the way he mastered uh, a variety of complex issues and presented himself. And if you talk to him in a way, he had this Buddha-like calm about him that I greatly admired as a personal matter. As a politician. I think the people in this room who are Democrats have to ask themselves, how do you win an election? Um, my answer to that, in some measure, when I'm being smart ass, which I'm going to be right now, is move to Madison, Wisconsin, Berkeley, California, or Greenwich Village. Because when it, the people in this state, when they see that word Republican on the ballot, that's 10 or 15 points you have to overcome. It is just brutal. And I wanted to comment on one other thing, and I'll turn it over to my colleagues, uh, on, the, uh, on, on, on Joe Miller. And that is, um, the, uh, Miller made so many mistakes and so many errors and unforced errors, where he just, he started talking about Social Security and unemployment compensation, and the variety of these things where he was again rolling the truth downhill. And he got hammered by, by Murkowski. I don't know how many of you saw the ad or the, rather it's a flyer that was sent out to people's houses that said, uh, it's Halloween, have you noticed? And there's, you know, Alaska's economy died today and it has November 2nd. It's a, it's a graveyard scene in which Joe Miller is either a ghoul or, a, <clears throat> or some other kind of creature, or creature from the dead walking around with blood on him. I mean, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> I think the word hard hitting doesn't begin to understand it. Um, and these people, the, the, the Murkowski people, spent a lot of money to go after Joe Miller, and he gave them lots of reasons to, to go after him. Um, I think if Joe Miller had said nothing between the primary election and the general election, he would have done better than he did. Yeah. Yep. I think he tried. But, uh, oh, when he was like, yeah, I won't uh, talk to yeah, the media, I'll then you get, actually have to I'll hide get, in a cave and not go on Fox News. I'll get News. security detail, and uh, yeah, that'll work, but it, not, not so much. Um, but take what happened in the general. I mean, I hear you in terms of, you know, the frustration over rewarding bad behavior, but the lessons came out of the primary. Uh, uh, look at the campaign that was run against uh, uh, Lisa Murkowski by Joe uh, in the primary, um, and it sent the message coming out of that election that there's no way you can just take the high road. You've got to come out hitting. If you just sit back and, and let people lie, uh, say anything they want, just be negative, uh, you're going to lose because people will buy into that. They'll believe it. Um, and just taking, you know, being nice doesn't get it anymore. It's, the, you know, was it Leo DeRocher or? Uh, right, the nice know. guys finish last. And so. Well, that, apparently so did the smart guy. And so did the guy that wouldn't, you know, screw over Alaskans to be a party hack. I mean, that's who finished last in this race. And I, I think, I don't know what it takes for Alaskans to sort of pay attention. Uh, apparently. Drama. I think that what we have to do is just put our elections on eBay and just say, hit it. Just go for it. Whoever collects the most money wins. I don't want to hear hiding her hair, jack crap out of any of the three of you. I don't care what your ideas are, because no one else does either. Let's just put it out for bed. Because that's where we're at. I mean, it's really kind of a sad state of affairs. Well, Joe Miller do I sound bitter? I'm a little bitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe Miller didn't lose because he had a lack of money. He lost because of the kind of campaign he is, he ran, and the kind of person he is and the judgment he made. I mean, this was a very bad, badly run campaign by any standard that you would think. The Republican nomination in a U.S. Senate race should be gold. It wasn't. I mean, there, we could have a long discussion. John would have opinions about why that was, but it's true. It wasn't. Yeah, it, it wasn't. I mean, look what they had to work with. I mean, you can only make a pie out of a cow pie and have it taste so good. And they didn't have a lot to work with there. What's your, what's your take on, on how, how this all went down? Well, it was, 
you know, when, when Bill Wilkowski was up here earlier, and, and, you know, I would just say that, you know, Lisa Murkowski pulled off this incredible, incredible coup by, with the write-in. And, you know, Bill Wilkowski couldn't do that because he has like eight more syllables in his name than she does. And, you know. I know. I mean, nobody could write Although his name. Thanks for the vote for the Pollock. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Does anybody even say Pollock anymore? Really, Michael <laughs> Carey? <laughs> Only in Chicago. <laughs> He's from Fairbanks. Yeah, in Fairbanks, apparently. <laughs> but Bill was talking about how, you know, down in Juneau, in, in, in the state center, I mean, it's, a, it's 10 to 10, and people are working together. And with all this drama in, in this election, People sort of forget that uh, Mike Dugan, I, I heard him say one time that, that uh, when we were talking about drama in politics, and, and, and Mike said, look, all you have to do is go down there when you're elected and do the people's business. He said, as long as you do the people's business, Mike says, everything will be fine, you'll be fine, you won't get sucked into all of this. Well, all these guys are trying to you know, reform the entire country and everything that we're doing about it, and really the job is doing the people's business. And when you do the people's business, you can get both sides together. If it's 10 to 10, right. you can form a coalition. But we had an awful lot of people running here in that race who were not focused on doing our business, taking care of running the state. It was just, we're gonna change the way you think about everything, and you're gonna do it our way. And you know, we just did it. The, the, the goal here is just getting back to doing business down there in Juneau and in Washington. Well, if that happens, you know, we'll get something done. But don't we all lose when it becomes the party's business instead of the people's oh, business? Oh, absolutely. Regardless absolutely. of the party. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah, because it doesn't matter what the party is. I mean, it's even, you know, these values about politics the government should not be involved in your personal life yes but we want to as tell you who to marry as, as long as you live your personal life the way we tell you to <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. like how big a government can you have as people telling you what to do with your uterus and how are they going to enforce <laughs> it because i don't you know they're not going to buy you enough drinks well but you know i want that job <laughs> I mean, somebody's got to do it, and you know, somebody gets paid. You get health insurance and retirement benefits. I'll take that job. <laughs> Maybe it's a no-show job. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm a, I'm the official government, what federal uterus inspector? Yeah. FUI. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'd like to ask you a few questions. <laughs> this will only take a moment. Just yeah. wear a headlamp. Yeah. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this, and this is considered the party of small government. I mean, what we've had our parties being so, uh, you know, we're defining it as this party means this, this party means this, and you can't say um, I'm I'm an Alaska, which means I'm I'm pro gun, I'm a Second Amendment progressive, and 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 have people in some places are like, well, that's not that's not being a Democrat or that's not being liberal, when in truth. You know, I mean, whatever the boxes are that are convenient for our news media, no offense to anybody here, um, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't work. It's sort of a lazy way that our media has found to say the Democrats meaning this, the Republicans meaning this, and, and, and to make those definitions. Does that make sense? Well, it, it does. I, I, you know, I, I, sort of along that same line, I think we also, some of these people, they really get caught up, in, I say, in believing their own BS. I mean, we, 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 the truth somehow has gone out the window in terms of trying just to capitalize on political situations. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking now of, we have a news organization here in Anchorage that can two people. I mean, you know, we, we talk, you know, as we're talking about the following, there's two people that are unemployed with, I don't know if they have a family, I don't know who these people are, and I'm just sad to see right, that. Right, the channel two, the, uh, uh, channel 11, uh, uh, reporters that left a butt dial. And they were talking. Exactly. What were they were talking exactly I, I about? What, they were, they were uh, what could or, come up and, at a rally? And but but again, there was an opportunity. No matter whatever they were talking about, it sounded like they were joking. But again, there, a political opportunity that was, was seized upon with no regard for who they were, whatever the truth may have been. That the, the object was to get to the truth. It was to make a political point of these people. I don't I don't know what they're going to do now. I mean, these are the there's so there's real casualties in all this sort of thing out there. You know, we can get caught up in 
and uh, you know, did did we win or lose at the ballot box? But you know, there's real people that, uh, uh, and I, I hate to see that. Do you do you have a comment on that of the of the different uh, times that? Uh, Joe Miller was made a victim of the lamestream media and, the, and, and, and people asking questions uh, I, about I, that? I would say this, no matter how many times, well, I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, election night, I went over to Joe Miller's headquarters and um, there was a big crowd there and it was early, they hadn't announced the returns and they were very enthusiastic. And these were the working people of Alaska. Uh, they were almost universally white. But, uh, and, and not they, union. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that because I didn't ask sure. them that. But they were uh, people who worked with their hands, who worked in industry and business and cleaned up after Alaska. And they were assisted by women who clearly did the same kind of thing. And there were a group of religious people there who I didn't quite understand. They may have been Russian or Hutterites or whatever. No, they're, they're maidens of modesty. Is that, is that what they are yes. in any case? But these people... Which I'm these people, uh, you know, uh, it's clear, work hard, and outside the door there were probably 12 to 15 people smoking. And I know, because there are all these studies that show the people who smoke uh, are working class people. And these people believed in Joe Miller. They totally believed in Joe Miller. They gave their votes to Joe Miller. They gave their time to vote Joe Miller. They're the kind of people who I knew in Fairbanks who thinks politics is a crock and uh, they lost, and they lost to the establishment. And this election is about ratifying the Alaska establishment's right to run this state. That is what this election Amen. is about. Yeah. Well, I think you're right. And, and sadly, uh, Joe Miller decided not to show I'm, up. I'm not saying, I didn't vote for Joe Miller. I'd never vote for Joe Miller. But the people who voted for him are people who are outsiders, who are rebelling against the system. Right. And this is what they got. They got nothing out of it. Now, maybe they got the satisfaction of expressing their opinion, they're going to be back, or whatever. But the idea that the lobbyists who were showing up at the Egan Center on behalf of Lisa Murkowski and all the, the powerful people are going to do anything for them, forget it. Yeah, I think that that, um, I think that that is a frustration that's not exactly going away. I don't think, when you said, well, they may be back, they may not, they're not leaving. And, and there's a lot of people that are frustrated with the establishment and being able to move within that. Uh, we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back with questions from our audience. Woo! I know, it's exciting. We'll be back. <laughs> 